Good morning. Welcome to the Guarantee RV Seminar on Roof Sealants. Uh, my name is Dave Taylor. Huh? And maintenance. And maintenance. Kind of the same thing. My name is Dave Taylor. I'm the Fixed Operations Manager for the ASP. Been here quite a while. My cohort in time here is Dan Edgecombe. He's our weekend uh, funny guy and manager. He seems to pull off both of them pretty well. Uh, today we're going to go over maintenance for your RV, roof sealants, side sealants. Uh, so if you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, every now and again you will notice us kind of put our mask out and catch a breath of fresh air. Until you uh, stand up here for an hour or longer and try to truck through one of these, uh, try it. You'll understand why we do it. If you don't like the fact that we got to catch a breath of fresh air, then this might be the time to not watch. So again, good morning. Uh, we're going to start off with roof sealants. Then I'm going to let Dan kind of go around to all of his particular things he likes to talk about. Uh, I'm kind of short and sweet. He likes to get a little more in depth. Uh, he's the brains of the operation. I'm kind of here for the looks. Unfortunately, this covers most of it, which could be good or bad. <coughs> so on your roof of your RV, no matter what you have, if it's fiberglass, aluminum, some of the old trailers still had aluminum roofing on them, uh, Dicor, uh, EPDM, there's so many different rubber roofs out there now. Now we have ABS roof material. Uh, you know, it used to be we had three. Aluminum, fiberglass, and a rubber roof. EPDM. Which stands for? Ethylene polydimorphic rubber. How do you like that? So wouldn't that be EPDMR? Um, well, you always use, you add the rubber afterwards. Oh, okay. That's Not true. before. EPDM rubber. Yeah. So, on the roof of your motorhome, I always use the roof vent, because everybody knows what their roof vent is. And they look about the same no matter which RV you have. They're going to be a 13 or a 14 inch. That's beautiful. I didn't do very well in the art class, so bear with me. But well, don't go to the toilet then. You're going to have a roof vent that cranks up and down in the air. Whether it be uh, electric, non electric, manual, fantastic vent. There's 20 brands out there, they're just about all the same. So when they mount this on your roof, there's holes in it. Go all the way around this. And that's what we use to secure this to the roof. So when they secure this at the factory, one guy puts all this on, and about 20 seconds later, six rows down, when they're sealing the roof, they have huge, huge machines. They don't, they don't put it in a little tube like we do now and squeeze it out on the roof. They have huge machines, big guns, where they put all this stuff on. So they're going to go around and they're going to squirt this stuff all over around the outside of this flange. And then they're going to come in here and they're going to blob some over the top of these screw holes. It's a self-leveling sealant. So they blob it on and it kind of rolls out. Well, sometimes they'll miss a little bit and they won't quite get her blobbed on to this one. So at Guarantee, we do a pre-delivery inspection where we check all the roof sealants to make sure they pop that. You need to, every three to six months, get up on your roof, or if you, if you call us and make an appointment, you can drive in, we'll look at your roof seal, take some pictures, show you what they look like. But probably the highest dollar amount of repairs we do is in uh, rotten wood caused by failure of sealants. And it's not only a two or a three or a four year old rig that has this issue. It can be six or eight months old. Your manufacturer in the fine point, of course, it's always in, in, in the fine wording, most of them state, there are several that do cover it for a year, but most of them state that it's your responsibility to check your roof sales every 90 days. The reason for that is, RVs are meant to travel, they're meant to flex. 
They go up and down and across railroad tracks, just through the woods and over the sand dunes, wherever you take them. This is a flexible sealant. However, when you're flexing it, it's pulling apart and coming back. Where it's flexing the most is around this flange. So in turn, what we find is, when we inspect, that you'll start getting hairline cracks right about here, or a little crack over top of the screw. And usually they're pretty visible because what happens with a little crack like that is a little dust gets in it. So it's pretty obvious. It's not critical right away, but usually within the next three to six months after you start noticing a little, just a little hairline crack there, to clean it. And we use a product called Acrosol. We sell it here. Uh, the RV store where you live may sell a different version. They're all going to be okay. This is just what we use. We find it works well. You can get it in aerosol or a liquid, depending on what you're doing. We will take that. We will spray it over the top of this where that little, those little cracks are. We'll take an old toothbrush, kind of scrub out the crack, clean it off with some paper towels or a shop rag, give it a little bit to flash, get all that solvent off of it, it take long. And then we use a self-leveling flap sealant that is designed for RVs. At no point do you go down to Bimart or Home Depot, they do not have this. They have some self-leveling stuff. It's not for RVs. Don't let anybody tell you, tell you to use silicone or liquid nails. It's a no-no. There's a reason this stuff is a little more for tube, because it's made for your RVs. If you can't come get it from us, an RV store, a dealer, supplier, will have a rubber roof sealant. This product is a Dicor product. This is actually usable on just about every surface on the roof. Uh, your vents, your side seals, uh, if it's aluminum, fiberglass, this will work for all. Very important you look for that because they do have some roof sealants that are designed for fiberglass or aluminum. They are not designed for rubber. And if you get one that is not designed for a rubber roof, ABS roof, what will happen is you'll put it on there, the carrier agents, the carrier solvents in here, will actually bubble the rubber and ruin it. Then you come see us and four to six, seven thousand dollars later, we put a new rubber roof on for you. So always be careful, ask somebody that knows what to use on your roof. Do not ask your Uncle Bill when you're at his house. Ask somebody that does this. You're going to take this, you're going to put it in the tube, or excuse me, your, your little shooter, and you're going to cover all these cracks. That's what we call an overlay. And you can overlay these cracks for quite a while. Uh, you know, depending on where you store it. If you store it in the shop, you're going to get a lot longer. If you store it next to your house and the sun hits it all day long and the rain and snow hit it, it's going to require a little more maintenance. In doing this, you're going to keep your roof warranty uh, basically secure for a year as far as seals. Um, usually sometime between two and five years, wherever you keep it, you can do this for a certain length of time. Eventually it gets built up, starts looking ugly. So at that point, you come in and we inspect it, and we'll actually let you know you need a, what we call a full peel and seal, which is we send the guy up there on his hands and knees all day long. Should be the guy that clocked in late that morning, because uh, when you clock in late, I'm definitely going to remember it. So he gets up there with a putty knife, and he goes around, and he peels all that old sealant off. And in doing so, it's nice and pretty up there. Then he comes through and he does basically another complete full seal of your roof, just like it was from the factory. I've seen some of these uh, 10 years old that were kept in shops or covers that looked almost brand new. 
and I've seen some that, depending on where the customer lived, how much they drove it, uh, they needed a full pill and seal within a couple of years. So, sealant is the most important thing you can do on your RV to keep it forever. I've seen 25-year-old nomad, 30-year-old, oh my, I'm aging myself, 35-year-old uh, nomad travel trailers come in where Grandpa kept it washed, he kept it in the shop. They use it all the time when they bring it back, they wash it. He kept the roof clean, and Dan will go over roof cleaning and uh, products to use for that. But I've seen these roofs last forever and ever and ever, and the traders are brand new. I've seen traders run in nine months old, and the sides are all dented, spider whip, dirt, dust, tree scratches down the roof. And the customers, all the first thing they say is, well, it's brand new. Well, we all know. We, we all know there's people that have a brand new truck, and those people have a brand new truck. It's called maintenance. Unfortunately, it's, it's your responsible to maintain the product you purchase. Uh, so, very important. Find a place you trust. We do free roof inspections here. If you can't come here, find somebody in your area that does. Most places we'll look at it for free. <coughs> Excuse me. Unfortunately, the RV industry is a very busy industry. So you will have to call and make an appointment. If you just drive up, they might not be able to help you. So now I'm going to go to side seals. You see me trying to lick my finger? <laughs> I love wasting this big paper. Yeah, I got another one. I remember junior high, this is how the teachers, you know, yeah. this in a chalkboard, not a yeah. computer. You remember, don't you? Okay, you're awful quiet. I can't get no facial out of you there. Okay, so the side of your RV. Again, I was not great in art. You don't need to tell me. Now, if you can't tell that's a motorhome, you know, we'll still steer it over there. That's actually pretty good. Side sealants. Anything on this, anything that's vertical on your RV. These rear cap pieces of metal that come down. Uh, there's usually a piece down here. You got bay doors. That's a terrible looking bay door. Probably leaks. Probably does if it looked like that. Somewhere around here, you're going to have an entry door. You're going to have these big windows. All of this is sealed in the side of this motor. And there's an open hole. If you ever go to a production plant, this thing is full of nuts. It looks like Swiss cheese coming down the line. So they do their best to seal that up. Again, people make mistakes. Sometimes they miss a little bit. So after 30, 60, 90 days, give it a look. If you see something that looks suspicious, act on it. Have us look at it and fix it. Or you can get a product. We use ProFlex. Dan likes ProFlex. I like ProFlex. Uh, I also like, oh, he didn't put my stuff out. They here. don't have any. Okay, we're out? Yeah. I like some stuff called Carbon. It's close, it works really well. The main reason I like it is it's in a squeeze, like a little squeeze tube. It has a nice little sharp tip. The reason I like it is because I can put it in my little toolbox in my RV. And when I get to the campground and I'm getting bored, his mom's reading a book, had enough of you know, campfire, I can walk around and kind of look at the seals that I can see six feet or down. And if I see a spot, I clean it with a little Acrosol, being very careful not to get this on decals because this will, of course, release the glue on decals. So don't spray this all over the side of your motorhome. You'll come back an hour later, your decals will be slid down about six inches. I will clean it. Again, put this in a tube, in a caulking gun, or I use the ProFlex, or excuse me, the what did I just say? The stuff I used. Anyways, 
No, the, the tube stuff I like. Oh. It's not for, uh, I just had the name. I said it six times. Yeah. We're getting old. Yeah. Anyways, I will put that on there. And you don't lick your finger and smooth it out. These aren't chemicals. 30 years ago, ever that's what they did. You put some sealant down, you lick your finger so it didn't stick to your finger. The problem is every time you're licking your finger, it's just not good for you anymore. Your, your liver and kidneys can only handle so much. So, use a rubber glove. This is sticky. This is not like a silicone. So when you stick your finger in this, even when it's wet, you'll get a little bit on your finger. It is sticky. It is like glue. If you find a spot that's really bad, you may have to take, uh, we call them putty bones here, but basically it's a uh, toothbrush, a nylon toothbrush. And if you sharpen the end, it doesn't scratch your paint and it doesn't scratch your motorhome. You can use that to shave off a little Acrosol, put a little Acrosol, use that toothbrush to kind of clear off the old area. Then you reinstall new. We find that people put their units up for winter. They haven't checked it for eight, nine months. They put it next to the house. They come in it next, depending on how often they use it. August, to make one camp trip and then bring it home. Then they're going to go elk hunting. They only use it two or three times a year. So for six or seven, eight months, moisture has been getting in the ceiling into the roof, down around a window, into a slide room, around the door, into the entryway plywood. And the first thing you do when you walk in and step right there in the top step is feel the floor snap and crackle, and you almost fall through. It happens that fast. Six, eight months, locked up, moisture, it rots. And when you come in and see us, then we have to give you the bad news on how much it's going to take to fix that. Because in order to fix it, we're going to have to put new linoleum in your unit because they used to glue down linoleum. We have to pull that linoleum up, scrape that glue up, cut your floor out, put the new floor in, lay the new. So again, seven, eight thousand dollars we fixed three square foot of your floor. But now you've got new linoleum and a lot of labor. So, side sealants and roof sealants, very important. That uh, other chemical is parbond. Parbond, yeah. that was it. Okay. <coughs> Dicor product. This is a rolled tape. It's called Dye Seal. It's basically made by the same company as this. Some manufacturers use this over the front and rear cap. Cap is where your roof comes to your, your front. Right here and right here. Because of the wind, it's getting hitting on it. They will use a strip of this. This stuff is the stickiest stuff I've ever seen in my life. So when you decide you're gonna, if you're gonna do any repairs and you're gonna replace this, as soon as you peel the backing off and touch it to the roof, it is never coming up again. So make sure when you touch it. You're heading in the right direction. Don't sit there and have it swinging in the air asking mama to hand you a cup of coffee because if it touches over there, you now have a piece of this over there. It's not coming up. They do sell what I carry in my fifth wheel is what they call a patch kit. We have a patch kit. Oh, look at that. Thanks. Appreciate that. Damn. It's basically... They change the color a little bit. Same stuff. And it also has a big patch of this stuff. So if you're traveling on a trip, you're hit, hitting through somewhere and a tree gets to the top of your roof, you climb up there and there's a big gash in it. That right there, you will take, clean that area put this big patch over it, again, being very careful to hold it up where you want it before you set it down. When you do, then you can seal around the edge of it with this. And you're continuing on your way to go camping, see your uncle, whatever you're doing. It's not going to slow you down. 
you do have to let this self-leveling sealant sit for, it, it's nice to let it sit overnight. You can get away if you're not going to be driving down the freeway at 65, 70. <coughs> you can get away with a couple, three or four hours. But if you're going to get run on I-5 and head south, you want to wait until the next day to let this get a skin, a good skin over it. Because if not, you're going to find it on the windshield of your tow vehicle or blobs of it all the way down the roof of your RV. It's a great thing to carry. Again, we sell it. Other, menu, other dealers sell it. Welcome to get with us or go to uh, whoever's closest to you in your town. What about temperature putting that on? Does all have to go above a certain temperature? You know, you're, you're best to have it 65 to 90, that this stuff will stick even cold. I mean, if you in can... In the wintertime, What's that? It will. In the wintertime, you're fine. The main thing is it's 100% dry. But yeah, it's... As long as it's dry, that... I'm not kidding you. That stuff... First time I ever used that... Die core die seal stuff. I I did that. I was up there swinging it around, and the next thing I knew, it was on top of somebody's vent lid. And I bought him a new vent lid because that vent, you weren't getting it off that vent lid. So it's good stuff. It's just good to have with you. And then, of course, if you do rip a big hole in your roof, you can patch it. Then it's up to you. If you don't want to get with your insurance company, you call us. We can get with your insurance company. More than likely, you can have a brand new roof on your unit. Um, or, if your unit's old enough and you, you're the kind of guy that you're okay with the patch, leave it on there. I'm, I'm that confident in that product that it, it'll be up there a long time. Did it hurt your roof to walk on it? What's that? Did it hurt the roof to walk on it? I mean, you shorten the light. You know, more, most roofs not. Most manufacturers even suggest you get up on top to check your roof and wash your roof. So you got to be up there washing it. Um, I'm 280, somewhere between 280 and 300. I reached that point where I quit checking because I was going up, not down. And I still got on RV roofs. You know, some of the uh, smaller, more inexpensive travel trailers. They have thinner stringers going from east to west, so you know you want to kind of stay on them or put your fit next to your. The strongest place on an RV on the roof is usually the you know there's stringers going across all the way here. Then they put side stringers, so usually around. Uh, your vent is your best spot to put your feet. And, and you'll see where the stringers are. But uh, if you've got a per, pretty decently made RV, I've never had a motorhome I couldn't walk on. I don't do, you know, my yoga and jumping jacks up there, but I've never had a problem. Mine just seems to flex quite a bit when I'm up there, so I don't know whether that's. They, they will. What do you have? Newmar. Oh, yeah, you're fine. I'll climb up on any new motor in the world. Yeah. Yeah, they are. You know, they don't they don't put a string over every 16 inches like in a house. They're, you know, every two feet to four feet. But yeah, wouldn't have an issue at all. Yeah, but they're a laminated, built-up structure, so they don't really rely on those. Uh, they don't. Yeah. Stringers. Yeah. They're a laminated foam. I mean, they're they're pretty good. I just seem to be like a flex a lot. Well, you're going to notice it. <laughs> Humans are not meant to walk on, you know, anything that gives. We're so used to our house floors and the floor inside the RV that when you get up there, you feel a little sag. It feels good, but it's, it's fine. Okay, I'm going to sit over here and drink some coffee, catch my breath. You've done and let good. let you go on. I just uh, wanted to make one comment. Uh, the reason that we bring out these products is because... They are unique to our industry for a reason. The reason that we use Acrosol instead of, I've heard people use WD-40, gasoline, you know, whatever to dissolve. The problem is with a lot of them, they leave a residue. And the residue, uh, it, it inhibits the adhesion of the sealant. So Acrosol, a little bit more money, 
but if you're doing it yourself and you need to clean an area, when you're done, there is no residue. So the sealants can bind directly to the, the, the material you're trying to seal. So we're not trying to just take your money where there's a, a reason we're trying to do a better job. Other than that, um, I want to talk about the maintenance side of it. Uh, the, the first and the most obvious thing is if you can't put it in your shop, I bought a uh, one of these carports and uh, they're not a lot of money, uh, a couple grand, actually about three grand. Um, they really, really do a good job. If you have the room to put it where you can back under it. Uh, I used one of these covers for years and if you snug these covers down, uh, they have corset ties on the front and the back and you get them snug so they're not flapping around. They do a good job. But the covers, uh, they're a steel frame with aluminum sheet metal, or no, mine's steel sheet metal. Uh, they're, they're durable and they do a good job. The wind can blow sideways, you might get a little wetter on them, but they keep all the junk, the pollution, all the pitch and everything off the top of the, of the fifth wheel or the trailer or the motorhome, and they're not a lot of money, and they do a very good job. If not, these covers uh, are a very good. We don't like to recommend tarps, because tarps tend to chafe. These uh, that are the Aquashed style breathe. So let's say you go out hunting, and you come back, and there's three inches of snow on it. It's wet. You put your cover on it. A couple of weeks later, if the weather's warm enough to thaw the, the snow, that coach is going to be dry because these have micropores in them that allow the moisture in the air to breathe, to exhale out of the coach. You put it away wet, a few weeks later it's dry as a bone. And that's, that's a real good thing. One of the big issues we have when you're not using your coach is moisture. And when we used to do these all the time, Dave and I have done a lot of them together, and we never used to agree on anything, but we're kind of getting pretty close. One of the things we don't agree on much is he's got a lot more money than I do, and he likes to use these bag-type air de dehumidifiers. They, they have the material in them that absorbs water. I like the old style that has the these are a form of a salt, all of these, and the, the salt absorbs it. It's a potassium ion salt. It absorbs the moisture and then you pitch it out. It's totally biologically degradable. And it, it's cheap. These are the same kind of thing. But what I'm getting at is, especially if you're living in it, part-time or full-time, breathing, talking, sweating, cooking, showering, if you run a gallon of propane through your stove cooking, you've put two-thirds of a gallon of water into your coach. When you breathe in a 24-hour period, you're going to breathe out several cups of water. And that has to go somewhere. Unfortunately, it lands on the walls and the ceiling. If it's cold outside, let's say it's 38 degrees out and it's 68 inside, the aluminum frame of the windows and the doors are going to be moisture magnets because that warm air inside is going to hit that cold frame and condense. And then the water is going to just hang around the windows and the doors and anything aluminum. So when you're storing it, when you're living in it, you need to have some means of getting that moisture out. Now the nice thing about these, or a cover, a, a steel cover, carport, this one you can unzip the flap where the door is and go in and, and once in a while, we always put these in pie pans, 
uh, so that they didn't make a mess. And then you take them out, pitch it out, put more crystal in, and they, we sell these in a great big bottle. You put the crystal in and keep going, you keep it nice and dry inside, whether you're staying in it or storing it, so you don't get that moisture. I remember when I was, I went back in the 80s, when I was kind of new at this, we'd trade a coach in, and then one of my jobs was to go around and check around the windows and the doors and things, to check for dry rot. Because back in the day, people weren't spending the money to maintain their coach, and they let it sit for a couple of years while their granddaughter lived in it or something. And they've got wood rot all around all the windows. The, the newer stuff, uh, its aluminum frame has high density foam, it's laminated and constructed wall. You still have uh, wooden paneling and wooden trim, and that stuff will contort, rot, pull away. Uh, it's ugly. So keeping the inside of your coach is really a good idea. Covering it is an even better idea to keep it from coming in. Getting back more to what Dave was talking about, when you decide, okay, it's fall, I'm getting ready to do whatever, and I want to maintain my roof, I don't know that we do that here because we, we get up and we just tack it, but I'm in the habit of pressure washing my roof. I've got a little electric that puts out a little over 2,000 PSI, and I keep that wand about a foot away from the the deck and then I just rinse the roof off with my pressure washer. Once a year when uh, I've done that and I've checked my seals and they're all dry, the next day I go out and I just blah, 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 pour this out and mop it on and at first I didn't think much of this stuff but boy I tell you I'm a believer now. What it does is it's a sealant uh, that seals the pores in the rubber and it seals over the top of this mostly for the rubber itself. You buy a new coach, buy a new Baystar or new Mar product and it's got a 10 year warranty on that roof. That 10 year warranty is on the rubber material, not on the sealants and, and it, like Dave says, you need to look at that every three months or so. So anyway, what this stuff does is once you've got it cleaned and you've checked your seals and everything's dried and cured, you put this on there, mop it out. This is, it, it, it's, it, it's a, a sealant for the rubber. The rubber is black. They put a uh, pigment on top of that, ethylene polydimorphic rubber so that it reflects most of the heat. So they're gonna be a white or off-white. But that pigment sheds. And you get on the side of your coach, you get gray, you get white. Gray is industrial fallout or pollution. It's the junk in the air. And right now we've got so much junk in the air and it ends up on your coach and then the rain comes and rinses it off down the sides. The white stuff, is the pigment for your rubber roof. And the bad part is, when most of that pigment is gone, you've got to put a new rubber roof membrane on there, and, and he takes check credit card for the 10 grand that it costs to do it. And we do a lot of them. So what this does, it's a rubber roof treatment. This isn't the only brand, but I think Protectol is the best. Uh, what that does is it seals it. The pigment stops shedding. Uh, the industrial fallout, the pollution, just slip right off. But it, it makes the rubber last a lot longer. It keeps that pigment in much better condition. The problem though is, and I found this out firsthand, once you've done that, you go back a few days later and you get up there, it's been raining and you want to make sure everything is okay. You do not walk on a roof. This works on fiberglass, 
It works on rubber. It, it works on uh, the other one. What is it? The, the other one is the polyvinyl chloride PVC. PVC. Mm -hmm. I said ABS. It's PVC. Yeah. yeah. Um, it just works on all of those. But when you've done that and it's dry, and then it rains on it and it's wet. You cannot walk on that roof. You will fall within two or three feet. It is so slick. So that's the downside. If you have some reason you want to get up there, don't. It's great when it's dry, but it's really dangerous when it's wet. So stay off your roof once you've done it, if it's raining. A couple other maintenance things. Um, I want to, I brought this over because we never talk about them, but Especially You're if right. you live in them. We never do, and I have them in my fifth well. Yeah. These are really good. If you're uh, winter camping, hunting season, any of that, you put these in there. Yeah, they keep the light out, but what they do is these roof vents have zero insulation. And you find out that they drip. And that's because of the warmest air goes up high. It hits that cold plastic, condenses, and you get rain right there. You get a little wet spot in the bed, a little wet spot on the floor in the, in the hallway, and a wet spot in the bathroom, and a wet spot in the living room. So if you're in a situation where you're in a cooler climate, not in Arizona, but if you decide to winter in, Air, in uh, Oregon, these really work. Yeah, they're a little darker, but they will they're good insulators. That's what they do. They insulate that area of the vents so that you don't get condensation up there. They're a good little deal. They really are. They're cheap. What about leaving the vent trap? Well, you're gonna you're going to get breathing, but it, you still have the same problem. You have that cold plastic frame, and you're still going to get condensation. It's not going to be as bad, and you're going to lose a lot of heat. But you know. Good to leave something cracked, either a yeah, vent or, or, or a little window. Little bit. Yeah. I have never noticed the yeah. water dripping. I'm not saying it. Yeah. It's not well, there. Well, no, either. depending on where we find that a lot with the dripping water is usually it's a husband and wife and they got a dog or two. And animals put off a ton of moisture. So, you know, and like I say, it all depends on your outside moisture too. But we see it. But what I did was I have three vents in mine. I leave the bathroom vent cracked to get my fresh air and to let other air out. Right. And then I put this over my bed and one in the front room. But I, I lived in my fifth wheel for a year and a half or better, and it did make a difference as far as you know being warm. Okay. But yeah, you're you're always advised to leave a little airflow. It's just healthy too to get some fresh air. I know it's weird saying that right now with. Paint flying through the air and wearing masks. But, yeah. yeah. Now, I want to say something because Dan pointed out that sometimes we don't agree on everything. I know it's hard <laughs> to believe, but those damp grids that I use, there's a reason I use them. And that's because I'm that guy that when I decide I need to take my RV somewhere, I latch it up and I take off. Well, I forgot that I put this one on the kitchen table in a pie pan. And when I get to where I'm going, I open the door and I'm like, what's all this water all over the floor? Well, it's usually this thing that's flown across, smashed into the cabinets and landed all over the floor. So that's it. It's not that I make more money. He's about six months from retirement, so we know who's got the money here. So these are great. My grandpa always used them, but for a little bit more, <coughs> These have this nice little coat hook, so you can like hang them off the handle, hang them wherever you want. And when I travel, it hangs right there, swings around, it does its job. When I get done, I pick it up, throw it in the garbage, put another one on. So I just wanted to make it sound like he was picking on me a little bit, and I just wanted to make sure <laughs> I got, uh, got that in there. You so, got more, or you want me to go after some stuff? No, I just want to ask you a question. Yeah. Uh, you get paid to talk about poop. But oh, you're not, not talking about it. Me. So my question is, yeah, um, when when we're coming up in the fall and there's a potential of a freeze, um, 
What do you do with the holding tanks? Do you keep putting that in or do you go dry? I put some in the holding tanks. Okay. That people, there's, everybody has their own thing. I put this in my holding tank with a little bit of water because water that freezes will increase in size. As long as your tanks aren't full, usually there's room for that water to increase in size in the tank. So I do winterize my uh, hot and cold lines and my water heater and all that. But my tanks, I keep a little of this in there so that in the off season, it's clean in the bottoms of the tanks. Now when I say this, it's a happy camper, odor-free, organic tank cleaner. I've been using it 13 years here. And it's made in Oregon. It doesn't have a bunch of harmful chemicals in it like some of the other stuff that comes from other countries across the ocean. What I like about it is, when you put it in there, it kills the smell. It doesn't make it smell like flower poop. It kills the smell. So usually when, you, when we have guys that clock in late and they get stuck working on a black tank, the first thing they'll do is put a couple scoops of this in there, slosh it around, add a little water, let it sit an hour, dump it, and then add a little more. That way when they're changing the toilet or they have to do anything, it kills the smell. So this Happy Camper, as much as I, every seminar, tell people how great it is, this company has not yet sent Dan and I a pizza. So, those of you down at Happy Camper, double smoked pepperoni, and I like the combination. <laughs> I'm going to get them one you watch. It'll show up someday. Is they yeah, make it made it where they make it? <laughs> I'm not sure you can make it right now, but it is, it is that good. And if you, our technicians can choose what they want out of our store here. And if you go from bay to bay, we've got almost 40 technicians. And if you go to bay to bay to bay, and look, there's this on every, every toolbox, every counter. Well, Some manufacturers. Great years. Yep. Some but manufacturers require we use, what's that? 13 years here too, that's the only step. Yep. The, uh, some RV manufacturers have, I can say it's, it's politically correct, have gotten in bed with other companies. And when they have issues with tank probes not reading right, they insist that we only use this other product. And we do that because we want them to pay us to fix your probe. However, what we're finding is it takes twice as long to fix that probe using a different product. So I, I'm not sure they, I think they think they're saving money or you know, what's going on over there that it's costing them money over here in the real world. So good stuff, I can't speak highly enough about it. I'm gonna go on to my next thing. Or are you doing that? No, I was setting it out for you. Okay. I'm going to talk about electrical and other things. Okay. So usually once a year in maintenance, usually it's good to do it in the, when you're winterizing it because the best thing to do when you winterize is empty your, your hot water heater. Excuse me, water heater. And if anybody tells you it's not a hot water heater, you always know that guy that tries to be a little smarty. It's not a hot water heater, it's a cold water heater. Well, they don't realize that a hot water heater kicks on when the water's still hot. So, theoretically, you're heating hot water to make it hotter. So, Just we're right on ice box in the Yeah. yeah so we don't this... agree on that one at all. But that's all right. <laughs> He's been working on that, that line for a long time. We'll try to convince the kids that. So, this is a tank safe. When you're <coughs> using your RV for a year, one of the lowest points that can catch any contaminant is your water heater. It's a big round cylinder. Well, I say big and round. It's not super big and round. I should have made that bigger. I could have wasted another page. Yeah. And your water heater on the side of your RV, inside there is a cylinder. You have a drain plug right about here. And your pop-off is up here. 
your pressure relief valve. So all the water that comes into this, any contaminants in that water, hyperscopic, you can't see, whatever, the further you go south, the worse it gets. It's going to land in the bottom here. And over time, it builds up. And some people will come in, my, my, when I take a shower, my hot water heater, or my hot water coming into the shower smells like my grandma's well pump, well water used two years ago. It smells sulfury and dirty. We know right where to go. It's sitting right there in the hot water. It's filthy gross, it's uh, irons and minerals and calcium and whatever builds up in there is being washed in super hot water. So you're getting the smell. So usually what we'll do is you'll pay us. We take this plug out after we turn the water pumps and stuff on. Because if not, when you take that plug out, it's going to shoot across and smash into the door of your truck and hose you down with water. And usually the water that comes out of these is not pretty. It's, it's, it looks like bad 2% milk. I mean, it's pretty rough. So you're going to hook this on your hose. You're going to turn it off. Gonna stick it in where that plug is, turn it on, and wash your tank out up and down, and you will be surprised what comes out. We actually see these where people haven't done this for six or eight years, and they'll come in, and when we pull the plug out, nothing comes out because this stuff has worked its way above the plug, and it's solid, you can't get it out. So then we take long bars and try to bust it all up and save it if we can in there and it comes I mean it's I somewhere he doesn't have it this time but I somewhere have a big Tupperware full of this stuff that came out of a water heater and it looks just like oatmeal I mean, it's terrible yeah we'll, we'll have it next month for next the month for the, it's still in my office good come next month stay tuned next month you'll get to see my oatmeal um, what Dan always says is it, it, he tried it and it tasted better than his grandma's oatmeal. I think that's what he said. Mom's oatmeal. Mom's oatmeal. Yeah. So just another maintenance part. You might as well do it while you're uh, cleaning your unit in the driveway rather than pay us to do it. Right. We would rather fix you on real stuff that's broken down that we can help you with. If you haven't done it and we need to help you get it clean the first time, we're more than happy. Okay, we good? Well, I've got a couple of things to well, talk yes. about. I, I just want to make sure you were okay with me stopping. Oh, yeah. i got to climb back so up in the chair. I just have a, a couple um, maintenance items. <coughs> Some guys, uh, they come up to me, and I get all sorts of phone calls. I get just as many as he does how to fix stuff. And what we, one of the things we hear more of than just about anything else is my, my slide makes noise. What do I lube it with? Well, the problem is, is a lot of guys will get down there with grease or spray oil or something on there. And this grease and oil, and they don't know where to put it, so they're just smearing it around. That grease and oil that they put on there uh, is sticky, and it absorbs the road dirt and film and grime. 99% of the slides out there, there is really nothing to be lubed. If there is, it's just oil in the gearbox or maybe in a, um, in your coach, each of your cobs has a grease zerk on it. Uh, other than that, uh, HWH is hydraulic, so there's nothing there uh, that needs to be lubed. And the electric ones, nothing really to be lubed. Uh, the rams sometimes, the electric rams, and the rollers may be a little bit there. The right stuff to use is any dry silicone lube. Dry lubes are not, when they dry, they're not tacky, sticky. Nothing sticks to them. Uh, this is what you use on your tow bar to, to lube it. Uh, to clean your tow bar, you use WD-40. It's a solvent, actually. You spray it, soak it, wipe it down, and then when it's when it's dried off, spray this dry lube on it. On your rollers and on your slide rams, dry lube, if you want to lube it, you feel that you're genetically driven to do it, this is the kind of thing to use because it does not 
absorb the road grit, the dirt, the grime, and things like that, which just make matters a lot worse. Another very important maintenance item, the wipe seals around your slides are, are very important. They keep the, the rain and the bugs and the grit and grime and everything out. They keep the heat in. Um, the, the rubber, typically to replace the slide seals because they've ripped or failed for some reason, it's a thousand to twelve hundred dollars a slide. That wipe seal is seven to eight to nine dollars a foot plus or the labor. And you've got two going up on each side, two across the top and one underneath. That stuff really adds up. Fortunately, if you got seals and gaskets on your extended service contract, they pay for that. But it's still very expensive. This this protector, made by Protectol, wrong one. I had them backwards. <laughs> Mold I can't see. So anyway, this is the uh, slide out rubber seal. What this does is it's like my wife's a grease queen. She's one of those ladies that always has hand lotion and that. This is the same thing. This really lengthens the life expectancy, makes the rubber more supple. Uh, you, you're much less liable to rip the rubber. Uh, it'll, it'll wipe better. It's just, it makes it, instead of drying out and getting harder, it keeps it supple so it can do a really good job and it does not attract grit in that. This is, is really good stuff. I just love hearing you say supple. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> An old man like me, yeah. Um, I'm getting about down to it, but when you're in the fall when you're doing this and uh, you decide you're, you're about ready to winterize, uh, Take your water filter out, but don't throw it away until you bring it in and match it up to a new one because every year, 30 or 40 times in the spring, I have people, parts people, bring me a customer and says, well, I had a filter and I threw it away and I don't need what I need. So before you throw your old filter away, bring it in and have the parts guys match it up. That way you don't have to worry about it in the fall, I'm sorry, in the spring. Last thing I want to talk about, I, I, as much as he likes to talk about poop, I like to talk about batteries. Uh, it just not gonna say very much other than this time of the year, people tend to not use their coaches that much. So if you're done for a couple months, uh, these batteries, deep cycle, flooded cell batteries, or absorbed glass mat, AGM batteries, they don't do well discharged. A flooded cell battery, if it's fully charged, it's lead plate and sulfuric acid. And sulfuric acid doesn't freeze till about 80 degrees, I think it's 84 degrees below zero. So a fully charged battery won't freeze. If you have a discharge battery, it is lead sulfate and water. And the lead sulfate is laying down at the bottom. It just settles out. It'll freeze at freezing. And it, so when you put a battery in your coach away, make sure the batteries are fully charged. Not necessarily need to take them inside because uh, if they're covered, they're gonna be just fine. It is best also to remove the ground cable and let the ground cable just tuck it back in the box so it's not touching anything. That way, nothing is going to discharge the battery over the, the fall or winter. Very good thing to do. What about leaving it plugged in? Yours is how old? It's 2020. 2020. His question bad. is, how, what if I leave it plugged in? And I asked him what year, he's got a 2020. About 17, I think, maybe, is that when they converted all the converters 
to the smart charger converters? Well, believe it or not, I think, it, I think we're getting old. Yeah. I think it was before that. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, several years ago, uh, the industry went from the old ferro resonant taper charge. The longer you plug it in, the, the higher the voltage goes. Uh, the current is minimal, maybe milliamps, but the potential could be 17, 18 volts. In a few days, that'll destroy a battery. It'll boil it dry. It'll, it'll destroy it. The newer stuff have intelligent chargers that sample the voltage of the battery and actually shut down when the battery's in full charge. So in this case, I'm, if you have a newer vehicle like that, there's n no potential harm leaving it plugged in uh, for long periods of time. But one of the ways that he and I don't really see eye to eye is I don't like to leave my appliances running for months on end without use because that just wears them out. He says it doesn't really matter. And he's well, probably right. My rig every once a month, at least all year long. Yeah. I just use plug in all the time. I'll plug in for a weekend or two just to charge it up. Yeah. yeah. As long as you keep your moisture in there, you should be fine, especially with the new converter. Yeah, as long as it's, with you plugging it in, it will continue to go on and come off. So in doing that, it's heating up the battery, which is, I hate to use the word boiling, it's steaming off the liquid inside. So you need to, the more you leave it plugged in, the more you got to check your batteries. Are we about getting close? Yeah, we are. I just want to know if we had any questions before we yeah. bowed out. He's got things he's got to get doing, so. Well, I, not really. I just, oh, this has okay. never been a really long one. Yeah. And you can tell with uh, COVID, we don't have a huge, so each one of those screws should be covered on the my roof on my top seal. Correct? I'm sorry. All each screw head should be covered that sealant. Yeah. Any cracks, voids, screws, any because penetrations have to be covered. None of those screw heads are covered. Yeah, that's because what they've done is they have a stuff called tacky tape, and it actually is underneath. If you're talking about the front cap. No, I'm talking about the sides of my Newmar. Now each okay. one of those screw heads are covered. They go in the side. Right. Yeah, those aren't, because those are sealed from behind. Those, those are uh, uh, horizontal, but they're on the vertical side. So they, there was no reason to cover those. They have them all sealed with the tacky tape or a new tape, whatever you call it. So you think that's all right for the DC cap? Yeah. Aren't covered. Yep. As long as there's no cracks in that, I'm okay. Yep. Okay. I didn't know. Yeah, when we do a full roof seal, we will cover them just because they're there. But the manufacturer has that gooey, as soon as they can start putting the screw through it, it rips up through those threads on the screw, and then when they push it in, it seals See some up. bubbles in it and everything else. Should those be covered? So what's that? There's like bubbles in it. You can see where there's bubbles in that. Yeah, you'll get some little bubbling. As long Does that as look like they'd be filled? Should I be filling those? Yeah, if it looks like it's open to anything, yes. Okay. Yeah, you bet you, you're always better to here on the side of caution. Right. And this stuff, you know, if you're just touching it up, one tube goes a long ways. Unless you're doing a construction product, and then it seems like you never have enough. Yeah, I, I wasn't worried about it because it's so new, but now I'm glad I came. Yeah. So, your bubbles, are you talking about the sealant or the rubber itself? It's sealant. Like, you see some okay. air bubbles or like bubbles that pop, and they're just little yeah. craters in that sealant. See, what happens on the production line is you'd be surprised how, how fast an RV goes from a frame to out the door with people wiping the countertop. And what happens is it happens so fast, you don't get that time to let it... Cure. It goes out, and when it cures, you'll get what we call gassing. So usually when we do a full wrist seal, we'll get up usually within about an hour or two after we do it, and we'll go along with a toothpick, and you just, you'll just see those little bubbles, okay. and we pop the top, and then they ooze back in. And that's just because it looks better. In a production uh, arena, it's built, they squirt it on, it goes out the door. There's nothing wrong with that. It usually seals. It just doesn't look as pretty. And when you leave our facility, we like you to get up there six months from now and go, man, those guys did a pretty job. It's not all about making it waterproof. Right. It's got to look good.
And do they put TPO roofs on those anymore, or are they all EPDM? I mean, is that the product I should be using? No, no, we it? have TPO still. Yeah. Yeah, we still What's have What's on TPO. mine? Huh? What would be on my boat? This is Newmar's TPO, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So is that the right stuff? Yes, yes. that will work for TPO. Yeah. This that one, Acrisol? Yeah, that's, <coughs> that's, we use that on everything. Okay. And, the, and the reason Newmar went to that, it, it, if you spend a lot of time under the trees, it's more durable when it's being ripped apart by the branches. Okay. Yeah, it has a cloth on the back. Like yeah. what? Cloth, cloth oh, okay. material. When we put a new rubber roof on, we can take EPDM and when you pull it across the edge, you actually grab it with your hand, pull it down about four inches, then you put your sides on with TPO, you get about a quarter of an inch of pull on that stuff. Yeah, it's pretty it's durable. Cool. It doesn't is it a better roof? Very durable. I'm sorry? Is it a better roof? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That's where they do that. Yeah. yeah. And that roof rubber stuff on that too? You oh, yeah. That? Yeah. It, yeah. Mostly, in, in your case, mostly for the sides. Uh, the, the fiberglass, I mean, they, they're, they're all full body paint. And they have a lot of pores in the fiberglass. Um, you got to keep that, that that those things waxed because the the pores fill up with junk, and then you know you get a five or six year old unit that looks really dingy. That's because all the pores in the fiberglass are full of dirt, and you got to cut that out. So I put ceramic coating on it. Okay. Is that all right? Well, yeah. Uh, what that does is. Instead of having to wax your coach once or twice a year, <laughs> I don't think that we need to have that conversation for five, six, seven years. It'll last a long time. I, yeah. I, I've heard that the lifespan's up to around 10 years, but I don't know. I would start looking at it. If, if you look at your sidewall with a magnifying glass and you can see pores in it, it's time to wax it. Try that F11. Well, it's not, that's comparable to that F11. That's what I'm yeah, doing. but you and don't have. Code. I wouldn't even look at it for five or six years, other than just enjoy it. All right. Yeah. Any other questions? How do I get the sash off my coast? Pressure wash? No brush? The ash? Um, it's non volcanic, so the problem is if you've ever watched. Ancient history, the Romans made concrete out of, they would get a pile of wood and burn it. They put a little sand and some other stuff in there and mix it around. Next thing you got concrete. So the problem with the ash is it has the potential, if you get it wet and let it sit there, it's going it, to, it, concrete is, is very acidic and it'll etch into like if you pour a slab on the side of your house, you need to make sure that the, any concrete that's splashed up is rinsed off immediately because it eats in. So you need to get it off the side of your coach as soon as possible. I would use pressure washer. Yeah. And then, uh, so is the ash abrasive? Am I going to it? It's 2020. Well, coating. Anything like that's abrasive. The best thing to do is wash a small section, hose it off hose your brush out, and I wouldn't use, uh, we talk, it's funny you brought this up, my wife and I were talking about our cars, and our plan is to not have a bucket. We're going to put some soap on the head of the wash brush, spray it down, wash about four or six feet, hose it off, hose the brush out, put a little more soap on it. It's going to take us all day, but then I feel comfortable uh, that I haven't scratched it. Her first thought was to run it through the power machine up here in Corvallis. And I was like, yeah, that thing's going to be a, a sander for about four months. Because yeah. everybody that goes through there, that stuff's going to get in those so what brushes. So you wash that real quick. I'm sorry? So what should I yeah. wash that real quick? I would get the brush. The no brush is going to rain. Well, yeah, pressure washing. Well. What we're saying is you take yeah. some a towel and hose some cars off. Is that that? Concrete, you get the light stuff off. Yeah, it comes in the bracelet. So pressure washing the air, rinsing it off, like he's stopping soapy water to, to break it down the soap. Uh, if you've ever noticed water, uh, is, it has a, a meniscus in, in a glass. 
if you put a drop of soap in it, the meniscus goes away because the surface tension drops off. So if you put a little bit of soap on it before you pressure wash it, it's, it's going to make the water wetter. I mean, I grew up, we had an orchard for years, and we used this chemical in our dormant spray to drop that, you know, anyway. Yeah. I think what we're trying to not do is get a, an so, abrasive going. Okay, on regular maintenance, though, no ash or anything on my roof. Do you just pressure wash, you don't use any soap, yeah. anything, nothing else? Yeah, uh, as long as you're not trying to burp, drill a hole, keep it about a foot away and just keep it moving. If you've got a trailer, don't go uphill. It, you know, with motorhome, you always go downhill with your spray. And so you get up on the ladder and you spray it down, you spray it down, you don't spray it up. Yeah, that's what we do. I've got a garbage spray that I think I've got to put some soap in here. Yeah. yeah. It's that important for sure. Yeah. That's the principle of the meniscus and it's a fat up. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Need to wake okay. him up. He's been asleep the whole time. That's the only way we've been able to keep you quiet. Well, so thank you very is, much, guys. My last thing is I wanted to thank, you know, right now, I don't know where you're watching from, but right here, Oregon, most of Oregon, California, watching it are burning up. So I wanted to thank, you know, everybody that's donating, the firefighters, the sheriffs, the police, everybody that's helping. And I, you know, as I, this morning driving to work, I thought, you know, no matter what's happening in the world politically, no matter what's going on, whenever something like this pops up, this is where you see the real heroes. And, you know, we all come together, and it doesn't matter who you're fighting, who you're standing next to fighting fire, or whose animals you're putting into your barn. Uh, we all help each other. And that's that's true American right there. So, sorry, didn't mean to get everybody teared up. I almost did. But we well, love thank you, Dave. Come see us next month. Talk winterize next month. Yeah, winterizing next month. Mm -hmm. Thank you, folks. Thank you.